Hello, everyone. I hope you could hear me well. And I see we are around 22 people at the moment. And our streams on YouTube and live recording are ready now. And I'm happy to see everyone here. So let me start from short introduction. My name is Nikolai Tretikov, and together with uh, Magdalena, I coordinate this event today by SIBB. And SIBB is a digital business association of Berlin Brandenburg. We are the oldest ones, we exit from 1992, and we unite today more than 270 businesses, uh, mostly small, medium IT enterprises from Berlin and Brandenburg area. And our association um, plugs in international companies into the Berlin economy from one place, and from other side, we um, promote and engage different companies from various industries. Um, Within Berlin area, our um, our association has different um, federal and municipal projects, and um, we, we have cooperation with Poland, Russia, and the USA through the projects Point Out and Deep Hub Russia that are funded by uh, Berlin Senate for yeah for economics, energy, and public enterprises. And it's one of the major um, sponsors of our project. And with all that, let me um, continue with our today's webinar. Today, we talk about computer vision. That's very important subset of um, the subfield of uh, artificial intelligence. And we have invited international companies, um, or one company from Berlin, another from Krakow, Poland, and from Fox Company uh, USA to tell their use cases, to share it with you, and to facilitate an open conversation um, on the challenges and trends in this indeed important and one of most adopted technologies of machine learning. Um, before we start, I would like to talk shortly on the rules of today's webinar. Um, first, please respect each other don't unmute yourself um, and let me help you <laughs> uh, to moderate. Um, I encourage you to raise hands if you want to ask questions or ask them in the chat. So I could um, ask your question to the speakers. Uh, after each speaker presentation, there will be a short questionnaire in Zoom and answering this questionnaire will help us to engage better with the audience. So please answer this uh, one question service. And you could notice that uh, breakout rooms already exist. They already run. And I encourage you to be proactive. Uh, if you have a question to the speaker, uh, please write them a personal me message, invite the speaker to proceed to breakout room after, after their presentation. Um, so you could discuss some individual questions. Um, and yeah, with all that, let's start. And I'm proud to in Markus von Tilburg from Fairfax Economic Development um, Agency. And that's our proud yeah, partner, event partner of CBB that helps us a lot to connect Berlin economy with the state of Virginia and ex exactly with Fairfax County. So, Markus, please, the stage is yours. Yeah, thank you. Um, hello and welcome, everybody. I'll share my screen with you um, so you can see. My title says uh, Computer Vision, although I, I don't have much to do myself with computer vision. Um, and as already pointed out by SCVB, we are the event partner from the US. But we have an expert here on board today, the company Saiken, where you will hear more about what they do in Fairfax County and Northern Virginia. So my job is it now to maybe make you a little bit more familiar with Fairfax County and what I do. I'm actually based in Berlin, same as SIBB, and that's where the partnership is from. And I'm building the bridge from Fairfax County in, in the US um, to Europe. Um, our role is it basically to help companies that plan to invest in the US, help them with first information about how to do that, where to do that, and um, 
help them with the whole process. Um, we are working for the government, so it is a free service for all European businesses that are looking to expand into the US. And why is it free? Because we are basically looking to um, grow the community of successful businesses in Fairfax County. And our return of investment is when you start to build your own office and employ people and start to pay taxes. But before actually um, um, talking more about what we do, um, I want to show you where we are because that is not as clear to everybody as Fairfax County is not such a huge name in Europe um, still, but we are quite a big tech hub and we are located on the US East Coast right next to Washington DC, as you can see on the map and Washington Dulles Airport. So we are basically the region in between Washington DC and uh, the airport. On this map, you can see that we are quite uh, big in, in tech and especially the way from uh, Washington Dulles to the city, there is a new Metro line and along these stops, um, there, there are quite, um, a lot of um, IT companies um, located. So the county itself has about 2.6 million of population, which is about 40% of the metro area. We have a very low unemployment rate. Um, we have 40% of the GDP that's been made in the state of Virginia is being made in Fairfax County. Um, then it's, um, we have 11 out of 16 um, Fortune 500 companies only in our, um, in our metro area, which is quite big. And the education level is one of the highest in terms of PhD and also higher education um, within the whole US. So you see Fairfax County is quite extraordinary and is not like the usual US place. Um, it is, it is some, some, something different. Um, the regional workforce, as I said, is around 3.4 million and 140,000 have a degree or a bachelor doctorate. So as I said, education quite high and we are very proud that there is a lot of software development, network computing, information, security and all of these things that SIBB is looking into as well. And why is that Fairfax County has been a classic um, communications hub in the past where many of telecommunication companies were located in the US and they have grown and evolved during the past years um, more and more into IT, big data, artificial intelligence and other fields and especially also cybersecurity which are now um, the most important companies are, are or most of the companies are working in. So in Fairfax, we have 430 international companies, many as well from, from Germany and Europe. And I think the most important number is that we have 8,700 technology businesses in, in the county in Northern Virginia. And um, we are not as prominent as, um, as the Valley, but um, in terms, the, I think that's just to do something that the majority of the businesses in Fairfax County is orientated to business to business or business to government, not so much business to customer. Um, yeah, this is again about the education. So 62% of Fairfax County residents have a bachelor's degree, which is quite a lot. And here are some of the Fortune 500 companies that I meant. So Capital One, Hilton, uh, Freddie Mac, Lados, they are all based in um, Fairfax County and make most of the annual revenue in Fairfax County. Um, this should give you an idea about the technology employers. Um, so you see we have Amazon Web Services, Appium, Hitex, Splunk, um, some of the big names that are located there. So if you are planning to do business in, in the US, um, in Fairfax County is a good place if you're planning to also network with, with these bigger companies. Um, from an international perspective, Airbus has its US headquarters in Fairfax County, but so has Software AG and Volkswagen. SAP has a huge operation as well over there. So, so these would be your neighbors. But talking about the big names, so um, still over 90% of the businesses are small and medium-sized businesses. So we often um, get asked or, or 
that people or new companies and startups especially might get scared a little bit by the big names. But um, these are just the names we are promoting, obviously, because everybody knows them. But if you look into the numbers, 90% um, of the businesses are actually um, small and um, small and medium sized businesses. Um, at the end, to make this really short, I just uh, want to talk a little bit more about the services um, that we offer. So we can help during the whole process of um, setting up a business um, in the US. So we can help you with first information in general um, in the US. We can help you in giving you information how the process of setting up an office works in the US. We can connect you with uh, legal and tax advisors that are very important in the US that have experience with European businesses and can give you valuable information. We can help you in finding the right employees in the US. We can help you finding office space. So you can sort of like consider us as a one-stop shop um, if you're looking on information on how to do business in the US. So if you have questions regarding that, don't hesitate to reach out to me. At the end, I have these slides here because business is not everything. So um, this is just showing a little bit uh, when you're looking for locations in the US, you should also be close to some of the places that you really like and where you can do something. And Fairfax and Northern Virginia, it's really um, a beautiful place. Um, if you if you get uh, sick of your screen, you can just get in your car and, and are out in nature within a few minutes drive. So I think that's already it for me. Um, here's my email address, and I will also drop maybe my LinkedIn profile in the chat. So if you want to connect, don't hesitate to reach out. I would be really happy um, to talk with you when it's about doing business in the US. Thanks. Markus, thank you a lot for your presentation. And I think you didn't really mention that Fairfax County is also the home for ARPANET. That's really important historical fact. And I encourage everyone to talk with Markus um, in Fairfax breakout room that is already active. Please ask questions, talk, that's important for business expansion. And at this point, I would like to proceed with our next speaker from Berlin, Gestalt Robotics. So Dr. Lambrecht is here and ready to tell us about uh, um, industrial computer vision, I guess. When less is more, motivation application that efficient artificial intelligence, industrial quality control. Okay, Jens, stage well, is yours. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for the nice introduction. Um, it's true, it's about uh, industrial applications of computer vision and mainly um, it's um, considering the domains of manufacturing and Logistics, um, yeah, when less is more, I will elaborate here a little bit on a few short learning technologies and their usage in industries and the overall uh, motivation. First of all, little introduction um, on our company uh, founded in 2016. We are working since uh, the start, um, developing project-based solutions for our customers at the interface of classic industrial automation and uh, new methods and technologies from the domain of AI or to be more precise uh, from the domain of machine learning. Um, I'm myself working since more than 15 years in automation um, and I've done a lot in the past with robotics um, combined with computer vision and um, in 2016 we already um, yeah, we, we, we saw that potential coming that especially machine learning is, um, is bringing and the potential benefits. Um, our company has currently um, 35 employees and as I already said, we are uh, independent and self-finance and currently in the transition from a project uh, business to a complementary uh, product business, but more about that. Later, um, yeah, we are working for uh, well-known customers um, and also have partners as we are also uh, very engaged in offloading our machine learning computer vision automation services towards cloud and edge devices. We have um, partners 
regarding network suppliers, but also for the edge computing infrastructure, for example, and also working together with um, telcos here. And <clears throat> for the computer vision domain, uh, quite interesting. Uh, we are working for Sony, for example, um, and um, also one uh, project that I want to mention is for uh, Deutsche Bahn, where we are currently working on um, solutions for maintenance and inspection of the ICE long distance um, trains here in uh, Germany. So our overall application fields are not only AI comp uh, powered computer vision, but also um, autonomous mobility. We have a software stack um, for um, autonomous navigation, indoor and outdoor. We are working in classic, in uh, classic stationary robotics, but here also more these kind of use cases that we enable that needs intelligence, typically provided by cameras and machine learning algorithms. And the same is for worker assistance uh, systems, where we are typically providing the basis, uh, the perception functions um, with cameras, 2D, uh, 3D computer vision. So today, the talk is on data efficiency and future learning technologies um, in computer vision, especially in industries. And if you're considering um, industries, um, so especially um, manufacturing logistics, there are a lot of potential applications uh, for computer vision. So these kind of inspection tasks, you can do it in line, you can do it um, at the end of the line, you can provide worker assistance if you're understanding what is in the surrounding, what the worker is doing, what um, parts he's dealing with, for example, in which a work step he is currently, you can provide a lot of benefit even for manual work processes. And um, of course, you have robotics and there are a lot of applications. But um, in general, what we figured out um, uh, when we started the company and um, somehow considered uh, it as our mission to bring value to our customers with these kind of new technologies inside um, so industrial applications. So the, the general situation was very promising because industries are demanding for adaptability and flexibility. So um, especially you can consider it now, um, so or during the pandemic time or after the pandemic time, production lines have to adapt uh, very soon. Product life cycles are, um, are shorter, for example, there are more variants for, for products and that is all demanding for flex flexibility. And in general, that is a really great fit for um, machine learning because machine learning can bring um, this uh, flexibility and um, surf adaptability um, due to that intelligence and this um, um, yeah, capability of generalization of um, what, uh, what you provide as um, input data. But however, um, data is also the bottleneck for the industrial application of machine learning technologies, because typically in computer vision, if you're dealing with um, classification or detection tasks, um, so you would need up to 1,000 sample images um, for, for training to get um, yeah, an adequate uh, performance. And this could really be um, the deal breaker, because the acquisition of this amount of um, images is often not economic or even not feasible. If you consider, for example, failures in production and you have very rare failures that are just occurring in one out of a, let's say 100,000 times or one of a million times and you anyway want to um, detect these kind of failures. So it's very complicated to acquire um, um, a decent uh, amount of data here. And even if you have, for example, check-in, check-out systems, considering uh, those kind of systems with computer vision, and um, you have a product portfolio running through this uh, systems, and the product portfolio is changing every day, that would mean that you have to acquire thousands of images um, every day and do a retraining. So this is also very complicated and not possible. And that was a motivation for us to really get into 
methods um, and um, yeah, and even do do research for what you can do, how how you how we can help ourselves um, out of it. Of course, um, there are possibilities of creating synthetic data, for example, especially um, that's feasible in industries. If you have cat data of objects um, that are to uh, be detected, you can use simulation programs um, to uh, just create a ton of um, synthetic images, but that just helps um, at a certain at a certain point and um, th th that's not all of course you can also have strategies to get the human involved in processes and uh, use the human feedback for example in active learning technologies but uh, we were especially engaging in future learning technologies and um, yeah made a lot of internal r d here on a specific metric learning technology that is working quite different compared to um, classic machine learning based uh, classification and um, detecting um, networks. And so this um, future learning technology is it's also um, a deep learning network, but um, in our case, a network is specialized in calculating similarities uh, between objects. And the result is that you just need five um, to 10 images for training so that we have a lot less images uh, that we need here. And we even do not uh, require retraining, uh, for example, because we can measure the differences between objects and um, use this uh, me measure directly for classification, for example. And consequently, this could also be used by uh, by non-experts. Um, if you want to know more details on it, we have a GTC, um, NVIDIA's GTC talk on the, um, on the details here. So uh, we are using this technology since um, one or two years within industrial um, projects um, and it's working quite uh, well. We received a deep tech uh, award here and another um, uh, computer vision award for this kind of technology. And there's also a patent application uh, pending. Here um, is a quite old video where you can see how the technology is working. So this is um, like an exhibition object um, of a check-in check-out system that we have here with a camera on top. And uh, what you will see here are specific objects um, that are placed under the camera. And you see the feedback here on the monitor. This object, this specific book is uh, recognized. There's another object that um, is recognized. And then there will be, so this is also recognized and then there comes the PlayStation controller that is not recognized yet. And um, you can see here the process of training a new object uh, to be recognized. And we could even do the data acquisition uh, from another camera. In this case, um, the colleague here um, is using the tablet camera to acquire um, yeah, five to 10 images from different angles of this object and uh, object and then um, he is instantly triggering um, the inference and um, we can instantly have the results for um, yeah, successful um, recognition of this um, object. So I think one last image. Now he's uh, triggering the training. And you see the instant result here, um, so um, that the object is recognized. That's how easy it is, and that also enables our um, customers to use this kind of technology and, for example, train new failures or uh, train new um, classes uh, for detection tasks. So, no, it was a little bit um, too fast. So um, there are, of course, a couple of um, applications uh, where we have already uh, working with uh, this technology. And of course, there are, um, there are more and more applications in industry, uh, in industries. And I'm just going into details here time-wise on this um, final uh, assembly inspection. So what you can see here is an object uh, from one of our customers that is manually assembled. 
And um, so there are a lot of variations in terms of which part um, should be inside this object um, or not. And um, so this was uh, formally um, checked uh, with uh, huge effort manually. And uh, what we do now is, so there's a camera, um, there's a robot guiding the camera, going to specific um, parts here and looking for specific objects. Um, so, um, and these kind of um, objects that should be um, detected, um, so that's communicated via the SAP system, for example, and we are also creating automatic reports that um, go as feedback um, again back to the SAP um, system. You can see here the recognition. And for the customer, it's also possible to train um, yeah, new features of objects that need to be recognized um, by themselves. Yeah, um, so um, that's it for this use case. We are also using it in, in pharma um, industries, for um, example, for um, inspection tasks that are also um, in line, so there are also um, yeah, or already um, successful applications in uh, different industries, not only in um, assembly, but also in pharma production, for example. And there are other use cases. Um, so this future learning technology could also be used for anomaly detection. Uh, for example, in this case, you just have to show five up to 10 um, images what is kind of normal um, and then it could be also used um, in terms of um, anomaly um, detection and this technology could not only be used with classic rgb images um, in the um, so you can also see here that it works with polarization images um, as well for example so that was my little talk and introduction on um, our future learning um, technology. Um, I mentioned in the beginning when um, I introduced our company that we are currently um, in a transition from, uh, from a pure project business to a complementary product business. Um, uh, this few short learning technology will be a pro uh, product soon offered um, basically in um, two different ways. So first of all, we are um, offering uh, the few short learning as a pure software module that comes with an API and could be even used from other um, integrators or other software companies, uh, for example, but we are also um, offering um, our few short learning technology as a system solution combined with yeah, um, different kind of um, cameras and also provided with classic industrial interface as OPC UA, for example, or MQTT and ROS. And of course, we still rely on our successful uh, project business and are also building um, yeah, individual tailored solutions um, for our customers based on um, this technology. Thank you very much for having me here, for um, introducing um, that um, a little hint. You can find us on YouTube as well. There are a lot of um, videos um, also on other topics uh, related to robotics and also visit us um, on LinkedIn. There's also a lot of interesting um, stuff about our company. Thank you very much. And I'm quite curious um, on what you would have for, uh, for questions. Hey Hans, uh, thank you a lot for the presentation. Um, yeah, at this point, uh, we are a bit short of time and we would um, already start with the next speaker. But I could uh, share with you that uh, people start to answer the uh, questionnaire. Um, what we would like to discuss most with, um, uh, with Dr. Lambrecht from Gestalt Robotics. And I see how um, answers uh, develop. And so far, the major um, major part is detection of activity in body poses. So probably we save it to the end of, um, of the event to discuss. And please encourage everyone, write to Jens, um, invite Jens to Gestalt, um, to Gestalt Robotics breakout room and discuss questions in private. And so you could see probably the uh, results of, of this short survey. Okay. And in the meantime, um, let me introduce our next speaker directly from Krakow, Poland. Today we have with us Dr. Karol Przestalski, Chief Technical Officer of Codeta. And today, uh, Dr. Przestalski will tell us 
was the cooperation cadet with company of named Med Transfer and Computer Division uh, in this company. Okay, Carol, stage is yours. Thank you for the introduction. Um, yes, so um, I, I'm, a, I'm a data scientist, so I'm, I'm doing machine learning, artificial intelligence for about 15 years. Um, we as a company, we are, uh, as quality, we are a service company, and uh, we also have, we have offices, one in Krakow, the second one in, in, in Germany, in Berlin, in Gesundbrunn. Um, anyone who has, actually is from Berlin know, know where actually it is. Um, and uh, yeah, most of our customers actually are from the Dach region. But today, because my experience in, in AI and in machine learning is that, you know, uh, now we have, we have the hype, everyone wants to talk about, show how, how actually how actually AI can be applied. But from my experience with the customers, in many cases, the problems or the challenges starts with the data. And today I would like to show, share with you an application of, uh, of a startup that we have uh, invested in uh, recently um, about data and actually based on the data that we transfer, the medical data, um, I will show you how actually how we build uh, how we are building the machine learning models. So Med Transfer, that's that's a that's a product. That's a pr startup that is uh, on the market for about eight months now. So quite young startup. Uh, but actually, it started. It started. The story that is behind is that uh, a, a year ago, more or less a year ago, um, a friend of mine. I mean, at that time, I didn't know her, uh, but uh, she she came to me uh, because she, 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 I was recommended to to, to have a talk about uh, the technical uh, details, and she she had actually she had in the past a brain cancer. Uh, successfully, she she was uh, she she is now healthy, uh, everything w went well. But the issue that they had that she had was uh, transferring actually the whole digitalization that was done, that is actually done in the, in the in the medical, especially in the public sector, and it's actually it's the same in every country. Uh, okay, in most countries there are some exceptions uh, that I will talk later, but in, in general it's the same same way that we are using similar, very similar um, medical uh, healthcare systems. Uh, that well, the way how we keep the data, how we uh, process the data, uh, that's very old. And that's something that is now changing. So um, what we have done, we have developed a platform to transfer transfer different kind of um, imaging or scans like MRI, CT, uh, X-rays, and so on. Um, well, if if you had this kind of a scan in the past, so you know that when you uh, exit the clinic, you had you got a CD, right, or CD or DVD. Device. I mean, um, uh, way, uh, with with um, uh, with uh, with the images on it. So that's you know, if if you take a look on, if you go to I don't know, Media Markt or Saturn or any kind of uh, electronics uh, supermarket, it's very hard to buy a laptop with a CD drive uh, now. So the CDs are actually going. It's it's a part of the past now, uh, but it's still a part of the whole process in the medical sector. And when we tried to implement similar solution a couple of years ago, it, it wasn't really possible. But the COVID uh, situation changed the whole thing how the hospitals uh, and the medical sector thinks or the main mindset change a bit. So what we did, we enabled, we actually moved. Uh, the whole transfer of the data that next can be ana analyzed with machine learning models uh, and now we change it we move it to the cloud so instead of cds dvds flash drives it's now in the cloud available with a pin code and some access uh, number additionally for the patient and for the medical doctor so the time for getting a uh, diagnosis is much much faster so what are what are the benefits of, of the product uh, just shortly before I go to the AI part um, so easier easier communication instead of 14 days now because one is actually the scan the second is a description for the scan that is that is uh, set by the radiologist now instead of 14 days it's just a few days where actually you can get the uh, the, 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 the results of the diagnosis so uh, that's one thing second thing contact less as you know, COVID, well, the number of scans was reduced during COVID time, time because the hospitals were closed. I mean, at least part of it. 
And um, that's why also the patient weren't able to actually do this kind of scans. Um, and in our case, there is no contact. I mean, you still need to go to make the scan, but all of the information you get to the cloud, so you don't need to meet all the people that uh, burn the CDs, give you the, all, the, all the papers that you, all the documentation and so on. That's all in the cloud, finally. Um, and yeah, time of the all, obviously on the visit, you get it on your mobile phone uh, and with a pin code, that, that's it. And on top of it, on top of it, we have the models and we are, we are just, we just not now started a marketplace to be used I mean, if you have a model, an AI model that is can be used on DICOM images, any kind of, I mean, it can be a brain illness or I don't know, something with, with, uh, with your, um, with, the, you know, with food, uh, I don't know, uh, liver and so on. That's all, uh, you, can, you can use your models. We, we started a marketplace for, for other startups that want to use the models in uh, for, for with this kind of data to uh, to work with us as well. We have also built our own uh, AI so um, uh, AI so models uh, for for example for automation of some of the processes. Like um, just to give you some, some example, if a neurosurgerist uh, get well starts with a patient the whole the whole diagno diagnostic process, uh, one of the one of the part of the of the, of it is actually calculating where the tumor is and obviously if we talk about the brain tumors and where it is located and how what is the size what is the volume of this tumor and that's something that the many many doctors use some spe special software that is quite expensive and it's only licensed for one workstation uh, what we do, we give it in, in our viewer, uh, that is actually a web application, uh, and it can be it, is, it can be accessible by anyone, even if the hospital doesn't, doesn't have money for such uh, for such um, expensive software for calculating this kind of a, uh, let's say basic basic stuff like calculating the volume of a tumor. But that's not all. I mean, this is just one one thing. We have also developed a, a solution that is recognizing based on an MRI what kind of cancer it is. I mean, breast cancer in this case. Uh, based on MRI images, we, we are able with a 90, 80% of accuracy find out if it's a, a malignant or not a breast cancer. Um, so, uh, so benefits, again, uh, we are green, no plastic, cost reduction, uh, um, e-consultancy, so telemedicine, teleradiologist, teleradiology, that's what we actually support here with, with this tool. Again, changing the way how the data is transferred. On top of the data, we use the AI models. Uh, that's beneficial for both and is usable uh, because many startups that actually do in, uh, work in the medical sector, in the AI and build some models, it's very hard to sell it. The business model doesn't, doesn't work well because it's, well, it needs to be connected with something. Uh, so security, obviously, that's a very important part. So we have the HIPAA uh, certification. We have also the all, all of the all of the communication uh, secured. Uh, so how big is the market? Uh, 3.6 billion uh, scans done every year. Only in Europe, it's about 300 millions. In Poland, where actually this is the market where we started, it's 24 millions. And now the uh, now the market we have, it's actually, we are now in Poland, we are in Mexico and uh, Brazil. Now also we are going to Italy um, and next probably Turkey. Um, that's, that's a huge market when it comes to the, when it comes to number of scans and based on the data sets we will collect, we will build our models, our, our um, AI models. For example, for, like, like I said before, um, for, for neurosurgeries or uh, orthopedists um, when it comes to osteotomy, for example. So we met in my, my 20, uh, 2020 with Ina uh, uh, and then discussed that idea. Now we have we have already uh, a few customers, uh, pay, paying customers. Uh, some of you might heard about Doctor. In Germany, they are not so popular, but in many other countries, they are for uh, for booking visits in uh, for the doctors. Um, we also have a very a very good partnership here uh, that allows us to go in the different markets, in especially in the South South America. 
So now I'll also sign in contact with, uh, with, uh, with kind of our medical chains. That's the development strategy. Uh, what we want to do now, uh, first of all, as I said, uh, just collect the data, connect and make it a standard. So remove the CDs from the market. I don't think it will be such, uh, such diff so difficult. There are some countries that I mentioned also, there are some countries where actually it is done by the government like Denmark, Israel, or Estonia, but many other countries, especially here, I mean, in Central Europe, like, you know, Poland, Germany, France, UK, uh, it's not solved yet. It's not solved yet. So that's where we come in and uh, help to, co to collect the data uh, and obviously share with the patients and the doctors. Um, based on that, AI models, just a summary, still three minutes. Uh, there is a mindset change because of the COVID. And this is what we want to use now uh, because the medical sector, especially the hospitals, want to automate many processes to do it in a remote way. It wasn't really possible to apply that before the COVID, but because of COVID happened, actually the, the hospital was forced to do so. And this is, we see a huge mindset. And this is the same like, like you know, with, the, with AI in general. When I started my PhD uh, 10 years ago, uh, 10, 12 years ago, um, it was very hard to get any kind of data or trying to convince companies to work, to, to, to implement some machine learning models. Now it's very easy because there is a hype uh, when it comes to AI. Additionally, you know, there was a change in the mindset of the hospitals and in general, the medical sector and the other thing is that there are more ventures and in general, there is more money uh, uh, on the market that is investing um, into the medical sector. That's also a thing that uh, should, be, should be now used as a good time for, for doing it. Um, yeah, that's all from my side. If you have any questions, I'm here for you for the next two minutes. I was fast. This time. Uh, well, thank you a lot. We have question from the public regarding data regulations. So how long data stored and yeah, how long do you store it and how do you deal with privacy data of patients? Are you on mute? Sorry, sorry. Uh, we are, we are, we are, um, we are complying with the GDPR. Uh, the patient has the right to cancel, to delete the data anytime they want. Um, so we have a feature called the patient card that is connecting to the P1 uh, European system that is getting the data from it. So you will, uh, first of all, the patient uh, is deciding uh, about that. By default, it's 30 days only. And that's only about, the I mean, the patient decide if the, if the patient want to keep it for research, if the patient want to keep it for a longer time or want to delete the data. Um, again, it, when, when the patient will, uh, I, I, I mean, have an account like the patient card, uh, the patient can also get the data from P1 and other systems to have everyone about the health in one place. Uh, and it kind of scan, but not only scan, also the PDFs like the uh, laboratory tests, also the, the descriptions for the scans and so on. This is how it works. <laughs> Thank you a lot for the presentation and answering. Now we need to move to the next speaker due to the time shortage. Um, we just share the short results of our quick um, um, sorry, when we ask people if they would like to adopt it for their active or potential hospital business, you see two out of six answered yes, and four out of six answers I don't know, so probably you just need to clarify it in breakout rooms. So please, guys, sure. come with Carol, with Carol to breakout rooms and talk on um, adapting med transfer for your businesses. Okay, this time let's move along the whole Atlantic Ocean. And it's time now for our next uh, speaker, uh, Dr. Um, Stephen E., Executive Officer of Saiken LLC. So Stephen, stage is yours. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon or good morning, everyone, depends on where you are. So this is uh, on Stephen E. Uh, I've been doing, um, personally, I've been doing uh, computer vision for the past 20 some years. Um, so mainly covering from uh, both um, industrial inspections, 2D, 3D, and also um, the medical field. So 
Uh, what do we are, uh, Daikin is a, a startup in uh, Fairfax County. Uh, so, but we're growing pretty fast. We're doing a business with uh, both the government and industry. And uh, our key technology is based on the, uh, um, uh, centered on the 3D imaging, pro imaging uh, and AI for now, on both uh, PC and uh, mobile uh, platforms. So, um, so here's uh, uh, our business, um, uh, the, the product that we have been developing and we also outsourcing um, uh, with, uh, I'm gonna, uh, in this comfort, uh, topic, I'm gonna focus on a couple of them. Uh, one is our uh, short scan SDK, which is a, uh, as a fast um, uh, and also accurate treaty reconstruction, uh, you know, SDK. Uh, and also Snugbots is for custom fit hearing aid uh, shell and also earbuds for, uh, for different applications such as um, uh, music and, and stuff. And MCURE is for more for uh, quantitative loan documentation um, uh, because um, uh, again, all that's based on a mobile platform. Um, and the FoodMate is also based on mobile platform by using the Food uh, app for uh, for convenient um, food robotics design. So our for the industrial for the 3D industrial application side of it, we focus more on the speed and accuracy. And uh, for the medical field side of it, we we our major target would be uh, your, our concern addressing the concern mainly con coming from accessibility for the patients and the convenience as well. And we want a quick, quick turnaround for the product for them. And also uh, the system has to be low cost. So uh, let me go through a couple of examples that's what we have done. Uh, the SureScan SDK uh, is a PC-based platform. Uh, it's, a, it's centered on the uh, FPGA-based uh, synchronization technology that we have developed and patented for high-speed uh, synchronization between different sensors, cameras, lighting sources, and so on. And so as a result, it can provide a fast uh, data acquisition uh, in 3D and provide pretty good accuracy, uh, in, like as, as good as a 10 micron. And, and also uh, we leverage the blue light uh, technology. So it allows us to acquire data um, you know, under different lighting situations, for example, you don't have to have the uh, controlled so well lighting, you know, as we do, we do control for the inspection side of it. So um, that's the plot of it. Um, so the SDK has uh, been tested in different application areas. Um, the primarily is quality control. Um, I list here a few examples. One is, um, micro uh, circuit board inspection, uh, which we uh, had that, uh, dealt with. Uh, it's really a small size, maybe one or two centimeter size uh, board. And uh, we try to do uh, the solder, you know, chips inspection on that. And also uh, another example is uh, industry parts, where is all the parts that it's very hard to measure. Uh, and wanna see how, if it's worn out or something. Um, so like, uh, you know, this I'm showing is really an airplane parts. Uh, the, the third one is uh, like a forging parts inspection really because the temperature is so high, it's very difficult to check to see what the quality, if the shape is correct prior to the next process. So by using this technology, we can do online detection and then um, to pick up the ones that are not uh, in compliance to the design. Uh, finally, well, we have been doing this for like for something like a very hard to recover part of soil. It's more like a 3D reverse engineering. So that's the SureScan SDK. Um, so move on to mobile platform, which we have been focused primarily on lately. Uh, more for by using the mobile platform, the mobile app, we can provide a 3D imaging. And as a result, we can provide 
a an array of applications which we are really growing quickly on. One is um, the custom um, fit hearing aid uh, shell manufacturing. Uh, I mean, currently, we're trying to solve the also a, a logistic problem as a result of cost associated with it. As you can see, currently for a hearing aid, which is a billion dollar industry, uh, the patients have to uh, get an impression done uh, by audiologists, and then that impression has to be sent to the manufacturer facility, you know, the shipping process, and then they go into the scan on the impression and go through a series um, uh, digital um, carving and design and so on, and assembly, and then ship it back to uh, patients. And patients have to, you know, uh, fit it and then refit it. If it doesn't work, send it back and then so on. So we're trying to address this problem by getting rid of the digital impression that no, the physical impression, uh, replace that with digital, digital impression. And then so that we don't have to go through this, um, the whole process. Instead, what we will do, what we will do is uh, to solve the problem in house at, you know, uh, audiologist office. Here's what we have the app uh, so far. This app is going to be released pretty soon. Uh, if you want, you can follow up. Uh, our website is, is currently for the in invitation only, but the um, Instagram um, has the progress of what we are doing. So we have an app. On the left, you can see, you can really start to shop. You can, you will, once we release it, you will be able to shop it. You will be able, you will be able to also um, scan your ear, uh, like uh, the second picture I'm showing, where you would be able to obtain um, the geometric information of the ear. And also by going through our AI-based technology, we will be able to automatically extract the ear and also uh, find the right ear canal, even though the canal section is very hard to be scanned. As a result, then we can provide appropriate, you know, uh, ear, inner and outer ear structure. And, and then we, after that, you know, we can do whatever product we're gonna design through 3D printing. And, uh, you know, um, that'd be made available uh, in an hour or so. So that's, that's what a snug box, that's what it's been, that's what it can do in terms of capabilities. The targeted market that we're going after is, um, we have includes the um, hearing aid, again, the shell, custom shell making process and uh, the hearing protection also is a big market there we're targeting uh, the construction mark, uh, workers, shooting range, for example, all that, they'll need that then to protect the ear. Uh, so military, apparently they will also probably need that too. Um, swimming related like uh, entertainment activities. Uh, certainly a big, big field would be um, the sound, the music earbuds, AirPod, AirPod Pro, stuff like that. A lot of people would have tendency of dropping their AirPod because the size of the ear, the AirPod doesn't fit your ear. Everybody's ear is different. Uh, the shape is different. So you put it there, you don't feel comfortable, especially when you want to move around. Uh, you're not gonna be comfortable with it. You can walk around, but with our solution, you'll feel pretty secure. Um, so that's, that's that. Um, so last one I'm touching is MCURE, which is the quantitative one um, documentation, because currently what we're addressing is the wound assessment is very subjective. For example, the measured size with a ruler and, and also the assessed wound stage, where, which stage is the wound at, you know, is it, is it is hidden, is it is stage one, stage two, and so on, and so, so on. All those is done subjectively depending on different doctors from doctors to doctors based on their own experience and perception. So 
what we're trying to address here again also is leverage our mobile 3D technology. And then when we use the mobile phone, hopefully the patient or doctor can acquire the one instruction, one, one, one data uh, to the entreaty as well. And then we send the data to the cloud server and cloud server will do the wound analysis, um, 3D reconstruction, wound measurement, size, volume, area, stuff like that. And also uh, going through the progression of the healing and see how well the wound hits over the time through a certain treatment. And uh, all that, um, and also provides what stage of the wound. So, so that's, that's the paradigm where uh, we are um, uh, developing on. And we have this app route right now under evaluation in uh, the hospital. So here are some examples of, uh, of the one app. Uh, so you can have a login page and also it gives you also past record uh, for doctors. And graph is really tracking the trend chart of growth of the wound, data analysis side of it is gives you uh, a tool to measure the wound size, even though it's, you know, the volume, the area, all that information is provided. You can also do close analysis on 3D. So um, let me see. So that's, that's uh, and also I what I'm not showing is the one stage classification. Um, so yeah, again, this is more, so we have, across the board by using this uh, 3D and AI technology to provide a uniform, uh, the standardized uh, documentation for the one uh, rather than subjective way. So that's that's it for my presentation. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Steven, a lot. It was really wonderful to see um, how could you uh, incorporate computer vision technologies and um, something feasible. Uh, in the meantime, I would like to um, run a short survey. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, does anyone have any questions to Steven? Um, let me see if there is anything in the chat. Very interesting cases. Thanks. Maybe someone would like to raise a hand to ask a question. And then maybe I would like to ask um, about, um, yeah, well, as American company, what do you think on um, European expansion? What do you think German market is, or Berlin market, maybe, um, perspective for your business? I welcome the collaboration efforts because uh, we're looking for the market um, uh, in Europe, uh, expanding that, uh, especially for the mobile applications. Uh, so we're going to release our app and pretty soon. So we're hoping that we can, uh, for instance, not about the example, uh, especially we're uh, ramping up the efforts, um, uh, hopefully with get it done before the holidays and then you know, primarily for like custom fit uh, earbuds for like, a, um, you know, hopefully AirPods, stuff like that later. Certainly, yeah, ear cam, the, the, uh, no, the, uh, the hearing aid shell is another area that we, we have primarily focused on as well. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. In time, let me share the results of the short survey. Um, yeah, free people free answer it eventually and uh, sure scan um, made the high interest out of free people. Um, so guys, maybe um, you could ask in the chat some more questions, Stephen, about the product. 